Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to knit the Cinnabar button scarf. This is an easy two row lace pattern and you can use the buttons to close it up and make an infinity scarf. You can also unbutton the scarf and wear it as a traditional scarf or you can wrap it around your neck a few times and make a cowl. So it's a very versatile piece that you can wear all winter long. And for this project, you'll need your yarn. I used about a skein and a half of the Hometown USA by Lion Brand. And that comes in the Tampa Spice colorway. <clears throat> you'll also need a set of 10 millimeter US 15 straight needles, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle to finish up, weave in the ends and sew on your buttons. And you'll also need two buttons. When selecting your buttons, because this piece doesn't have buttonholes per se, it uses the decorative lace holes to connect it together. So you want to make sure that your button can pass through the lace holes without any problem. You want to make sure that your buttons are large enough to not fall through the holes, but small enough to pass comfortably through the holes. <clears throat> so to begin, get some of our yarn out here. And like I said before, this is just a two row lace pattern. So it's really good if you want a, just a quick and easy pattern or if you're learning how to uh, knit lace. This is a, a really good starter pattern for lace. And we'll start by putting a slip knot on our knitting needle. And I'm going to use the long tail cast on. You can really use any cast on you prefer. <clears throat> and we'll just put a slip knot on our knitting needle. And then we'll start with row one. After we cast on. So when you put a slip knot on here, this counts as a stitch. So we're going to cast on 16. So that's one, two, three, and you'll want to do this fairly loosely, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And you'll have a little tail here. You can just weave that in later. So after we've cast on our stitches, I always like to go back and double check my cast on just to make sure I've cast on the needed number of stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You can do this if you want to or not. I just like to double check just to make sure. So we'll pull out a little more yarn and then we're going to start with row one. To work row one, you'll knit the first stitch And then you'll work a yarn over. To work a yarn over, just wrap the yarn around your right needle, just like that. And that's a very simple increase. That'll add a stitch. Next, you're going to knit two together. To knit two together, insert your needle into two stitches. And then knit as you normally would. And that is a very simple decrease. Let me just give this a tug here to show you. So you'll now have three stitches on your right needle. We're going to continue in this sequence all the way across the row until we have one stitch left. So we're going to yarn over, knit two together, and sometimes when you're knitting the first row things can be a little bit snug and that's okay. That first row is 
usually a little snug when you cast on. So just try and cast on as loose as you can. Some people even like to cast on using a larger needle and then they'll later switch back to start that first row. But that's a personal preference. If you find that helps you, then definitely go for it. So we're just working a yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and now we have one stitch left on our needle. We're just going to knit that. So this is row one complete of our cinnabar scarf. Next we're going to flip our work and begin row two. <clears throat> to work row two, we're going to purl the first stitch. I'm going to slide my yarn over a little. So purl one. Then we're going to work it the same way as row one, but in reverse. So I'm just pulling out some yarn here. So we'll purl one, and then we're going to yarn over, and then purl two. Purl two is worked pretty much the same way as the knit two together. I'm sorry, purl two together. So we're going to insert the needle like this instead. Wrap the yarn around the needle and purl together, just like that. So you should have one, two, three stitches on your needle. Yarn over, purl two together, 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 yarn over, purl two together. So you have one stitch left on your needle. And then we're just going to purl the last stitch. So let's put our, these are gigantic metal noisy needles we have here this morning. So row one and two is complete. You can just kind of check out your work as you go along. I also like to kind of spot check as I'm knitting and just every so often just count the number of stitches on my needle just to make sure I'm on track because when you knit lace it builds on itself so when you are off a little things can get a little crooked so I just like to kind of spot check every several rows just to make sure I still have 16 on my on my needle so to finish your cinnabar scarf you're just going to keep working rows one and two uh, I didn't mention this before, but row one is the right side of your work where you work the knit stitches. Row two is the wrong side of your work where you're going to be purling the stitches. So to finish your scarf, you'll just keep working rows one and two all the way across until you get the length that you like. The finished cinnabar scarf that I made came out to be about six inches wide, and I made mine 42 inches long. However, you can keep going if you like and make yours extra long and use the full two skeins. I used again one and a half skeins of this yarn. Um, so you just keep going to the you get to the desired length. When you're finished, you can take your tapestry needle and weave in the ends. And I can show you really quickly too how to bind off. We'll just bind off what we've done so far. To bind off I uh, did my bind off on the right side of the work because I 
did my bind off using knit stitches. If you prefer to bind off on the wrong side where you purl, just do purl stitches instead. But to bind off, knit one stitch, then knit another stitch. This is a basic bind off. There's other ways, but we're just going to do a basic bind off. So we have two stitches on our needle. Just take your other needle and lift this stitch up over that stitch, just like that. Let's do that again. Knit so you have two on your needle, and then lift the stitch over, just like that. So you just keep doing that all the way across until you have one stitch left on your knitting needle. And then you can just fasten that off. So here we've done a few here, and I'll show you what we have done so far. So here we've bound off and you can see it's starting to come off of the needle. And you'll just keep doing that until you have one stitch left and then you'll just break the yarn and fasten it off. We'll get that out of the way. And then once you weave in the ends, you can sew your buttons on. And again, make sure your buttons can pass through these lacy holes. And I just used a matching piece of yarn to sew mine on. And that's it. That's how you make the Cinnabar button scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.